For our mangrove plant walk, I headed to Robinson Preserve in Manatee County, Florida, which is one of the sites that I used to work at when I was the volunteer and education division manager for Manatee County's Parks and Natural Resources. We had a lot of issues with the wind. I am still learning how to do this video thing, so please be patient with me. I know the sound quality isn't great, but there's a lot of great information here, and I hope you'll enjoy. So one of the famous trees that we have here in Florida all around the coastline is the mangrove tree. And for those of you that are new to Florida, you might not know that we actually have three different types of mangroves and then we have their funky cousin, the buttonwood. And today, though, we're talking about all three mangroves and I'm actually at a place where I have all three right next to me. I've got the black mangrove, which is this guy right here. I've got the white mangrove and then a little bit behind me I have the red mangrove and it's kind of unusual to find them one right next to each other because usually when we teach about these we talk about them growing in almost like different zones as you go out closer to the water typically the white mangroves grow closest away from the water's edge then the blacks and then the reds kind of out furthest but here at the site we're at, many of these mangroves were planted or they were recruited, so they're kind of uh, mixed in. But that's great for us because it means that we can look at them nice and close and learn about how to identify them. So let's take a closer look. So let's start off. This is the black mangrove. And you can tell, probably the easiest way to tell this guy is if you look at the bottom of the leaves, it's silvery. So the top is kind of a, a brighter green, but not as bright as what I see when I see the red. In fact, a lot of times to me, it looks kind of dark. And then the underside is silvery. The bark of the black mangrove too, you can kind of see right here, it looks a lot darker. And we'll try to find a, a more mature tree to show you as well, but it's a lot darker than the red mangrove, which has a tendency to be a little bit more reddish. And um, also, I guess you could say it's, it's a little more gray, maybe less dark and, and more gray. Right now, this one is just getting ready to go into fruit and flower. So you can see right here, this is what it looks like when it's just getting ready to start making fruits. Behind it, we have a red mangrove tree, Oop, a little guy. And that's this one right here. And you can probably see that the leaves are a super bright, bright, bright green. They're bright, almost like yellow green on the bottom and on top. They're a vibrant green. And then the bark of it uh, is this really pretty dark reddish color. Now, this one is going to start putting its seeds out as well. It has a very um, special ones that it calls, that, that are called propagules, which are long uh, uh, seeds that will form here. And they almost look like long beans and they're made for floating. Ooh, actually, we have one right here. So I'll see if I can show you. See this guy right here? That is a propagule. So what'll happen is this will eventually fall off. It's actually weighted heavier at the bottom than it is at the top and it'll float along the water almost like a fishing bobber and it eventually it'll come to a place for it to land and the, the, uh, the bottom will go in and it'll make a little, um, almost like a little mini tree. It'll sprout root, or excuse me, it'll sprout leaves at the top and roots at the bottom and it'll stand up and form a small little red mangrove tree. So that's the red mangrove. And then the white mangrove, we'll actually take a look at it right here. This is a white mangrove tree. And for me, I always can tell this guy because the leaves are a lot more round, they're oval. The black mangrove right here also is pretty oval, but they have a more pointed tip. And sometimes on the black, this guy doesn't have it, but sometimes you can find salt crystals growing on the leaves because as the plant ex excretes water or as it processes the water, it'll actually transfer the salt crystals out of the surface of the leaves. The red mangrove tree has that same oblong or oval shape with the point, but you can see the mid rib of the leaf is like a really, really bright yellow. And sometimes the black have that as well, but I find the red mangrove leaves are a lot thicker. They're more fleshy and they seem to be larger. If we compare that with the white mangrove right here, you can see these are a lot more round in shape. The other thing we can look at on these is if you look at the base of the leaf, at the base of the, at the base of the petiole right here, you can see these two little bumps. Those bumps are special glands that help the tree 
excrete salt. And so that's another really good way to tell that you're looking at a white mangrove. The flowers and the fruit or the seeds of the white mangrove, the, uh, the fruiting bodies also look a lot different than our red mangrove. If you remember, we saw it, it's got that long propagule. Sometimes they're called, uh, I've heard them call, called um, sea beans, all different sorts of stuff because they're long like a, like a green bean. But this is our white mangrove fruit and you can see it looks quite a bit different. It has more of like a, I don't know, almost like a, a rounded shape and it has these um, almost like wrinkles in it. They always remind me somewhat of sunflower seeds. I don't know why, that's just kind of what they look like to me. But you can see that they grow, oh this is a good one, they grow in clusters at, all along the um, the branches. So they're growing at the edges of the branches and you can see kind of at the at the tips. So that's a good indication when you see this in fruit that this is the white mangrove. So right here we can see a little baby red mangrove right here. You can see that it's popped up from its propagules. And then over here, you can see the dark of the black mangrove. You can see that really, really clear. So that dark, um, dark gray, if, when in the more mature trees, it actually looks black. It has a very smooth bark. So both the red mangrove and the black mangrove have the smoother bark, but you'll find that the black mangrove tends to be dark um, gray or brown, while the red mangrove is more of a reddish brown. And when you look on the ground, when you see the ones that are tall like this and they have the cluster of leaves at the top that have that almost like that rubbery look, that is the baby red mangrove coming up from the propagule. And you can see along here, there's all sorts of babies popping up. Let's see what else we can find as we walk along here. This beautiful black mangrove right here. And then next to us, we've got another, a couple more black mangroves hanging out in there. So usually the black mangroves grow not super far into the coast, but they grow closer in from the water's edge than the red. Sometimes they're along the water's edge, but we usually see them a little bit higher up on the shore, like this one right here. Here's a beautiful black mangrove. You can kind of see it's there. And then we would expect to find the red mangroves. If you can look and peek, there's some water behind it. We would actually expect to find the red mangroves behind these black mangroves growing in and putting down prop roots to help them grow up out over the water, to prop them up over the water. And then usually the white mangroves would be closest to us right here, but again, because we're at a site where a lot of these were planted, we don't always um, find the trees are following the rules here. So I mentioned that we have three mangroves in the state of Florida, and then we also have their like kind of funky cousin, the buttonwood. And this is a giant uh, green buttonwood behind me right now. So I'll show you some of the identifying qualities of this one. A lot of times these are up higher up on the shore where we would expect to find the white mangroves and even maybe a little bit closer in. So this is a good one to know if you live around the beach or coastal areas, you'll find these planted quite a lot as well as their cousin, the silver buttonwoods which have more of a silvery looking leaf. Come on over and I'll show you. So the leaves for this one have that same kind of long rounded shape. I find that they typically have really, really pointed tips. So you can see that really clearly right here. This one is a lot brighter green, but I've found them in a lot of different um, shades. But the way the, they get their name, let's see if we can find one, because their seeds grow in these really neat little buttons. Oh, here's one right here. So. We have this one, these are flowering and they're just going to get ready to start making seeds. So you can see the little buttons right there and here's some little tiny ones that'll be going into um, full maturity and turning into little clusters of seeds once they grow up. So these have got to be about the size of a dime, maybe a nickel and they're little round globes that eventually can bust open and make seeds to spread. The other way you can tell it's a buttonwood is if you look at the bark, it is super rough. So a lot of our mangroves, with the exception of our white mangrove, it can be a little bit rougher bark, but the buttonwoods have a really, really rough bark. So that is another good way to distinguish them from some of our other coastal trees. All right, here's an even better buttonwood. You can kind of see, I have pretty small hands, but you get the idea about the size of the fruit as it starts to mature. And then behind it right here, you can see it turns brown 
and whoop, even as I pulled it, it broke apart in my hand. So each of these little seeds has almost, or the fruit has like a little chamber and once they mature and dry out, each one of them will burst apart into seed. So that is a really good distinguishing characteristic of the buttonwood. You can see right here, this guy has some brown ones and you can notice that like it's all over the tree. <laughs> like it's not just in one or two places. So once it starts putting those little seeds out, you'll see them everywhere. So that's a really easy way to, to tell that this is the buttonwood. Right here in front of me, we have a little patch of baby black mangrove trees. And I wanted to share this one with you because it really gives you an idea of how these trees are instrumental in helping to prevent erosion and really keeping the soil together along our coastal areas. So one of the things that the black mangrove trees do is they put up what are called nematophores, which are these little tubes right here. If you think of them as being like a snorkel, they're on the roots of the tree and they pop out of the water at high tide so that the tree is uh, not, it doesn't drown when the highest waters come in. Now this is super advantageous for the tree, but it's also really, really great for the land because if you look right here, we may have like, mm, there is probably, oh, mm, 10 to 20 trees here. But look, just this one little guy right here, two little guys, they've put up all of these nematophores. What happens is, is that the soil collects around these little breathing tubes and is able to help create, maintain, and stabilize the shoreline. So these trees are extremely important when we talk about making sure that we have resiliency during hurricanes, because when they're little like this, um, they are already helping to build the soil and maintain its integrity. When the trees get larger, so these trees right here are, oh, well, they're definitely taller than me. They're about seven to eight feet tall and they're not really that old. So even at this height, you can see they're forming almost like a wall in front of the water. So if we have storm surge, these trees are going to help absorb some of that energy as it's coming through during a hurricane. So super important in terms of keeping our coastal areas safe and sound during storms and preventing erosion and keeping our erosion and keeping our beaches and our coastal waterways um, protected and uh, and actually still here, keeping them from eroding away. And that's just one of the many functions of the mangrove. Here's another great example of those nematophores. You can see them popping up all over this salt marsh. The mangroves in this area are actually probably about 10 years old, maybe a little bit older, but they're only about three to four, maybe six feet tall at the most because this isn't a really great ha habitat for them to grow in. They can grow in the salt marsh, but they don't always get the uh, best soil and nutrients that they need in order to thrive. And sometimes they get outcompeted by other plants that are better adapted for some of the harsh conditions of the salt marsh. Even still though, they are um, doing quite well here. And you can see down here, we've got lots of baby black and red mangroves popping up. There are a variety of different creatures that live in and among the mangroves too, like this little cutie, the mangrove tree crab. You can see him nibbling on some of the mangrove leaves. So they actually live in the trees and also feast upon them. But then we also have a variety of birds, everything from roseate spoonbills to great blue herons and all different types of fish that live in among the nematophores that we talked about earlier. They will grow up in them and it provides them a safe harbor. So these trees are so important, not just to Southwest Florida where I live, but to coastal communities around the world. And it's great to be able to identify them and to be able to know a little bit about which tree is which, as well as understanding the important role they play for humans, animals, and the land itself.